Hi everyone, I'm James Ng, your friendly realtor and destination consultant. Welcome back to our series of Expect Guides with James. Today, we're going to share with you some communities that expect frequents. And our first stop here is Singapore Botanic Garden. So, since we are here, right, I mean like if you are new to Singapore, this is the Singapore Botanic Garden. And you see this place, the corner house, the Michelin Star Restaurant. So this is the entrance to corner house. So do you know, back in the 1960s, our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, he started the tree planting and the Garden City campaign. So this symphony lake here that you see, it used to be a nursery to grow the plants for our city. Today, the gardens still uphold the mission of keeping our city clean and green. So right now, we are at another part of Botanic Garden. We are, now I'm standing at this uh, Orchid Plaza. So right behind me is this clock tower that has a, a time for different countries, Vancouver, Tokyo, and even London. And right in front of me is a National Orchid Garden. So this place is per entry. So you need to pay $5 to uh, gain entry. And if you are a senior citizen or you are a student, it's $1 per entry. And if, uh, let's say you are 12 years old and below, then it's free for you. Come, let's go. Okay, so now we got our tickets and this way. So earlier I touched on our founding father, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. So you see, the National Orchid Gardens is officially opened by him. Okay, so now we are on our way to meet some VIPs here in the Orchid Garden. So are ready? Come, let's go. Alright, we are here to meet the very important plants. Okay, anyway, jokes aside, for your information, every time when a head of state or dignitaries come to Singapore, this is one place they will always visit, the Orchid Garden. It is a long-standing tradition for Singapore to name orchids after visiting dignitaries and celebrities who have contributed significantly to society. So, right here is our national flower, Vanda Miss Joachim. Right behind this ginger garden, this signboard, there's also a lot of eateries. Alright, so as we advance further, later you will see a very mini waterfall. So, back in the 50s and 60s, this is a place that is very popular among couples where they come here to Pato. So what is Pato? Pato, in fact, is a Hokkien word, also known as dating. So right behind me, you can see this is a popular spot where couples will come for their dates and also it's very popular among uh, young couples for wedding shoots. So right here is the Swan Lake which is also the nearest to the Tangling entrance. And if you're lucky, you may even see the family of authors. So we are done touring one of the UNESCO heritage sites, the Singapore Botanic Garden. It is open every day, so if you're a nature lover, do check it out. So now we are at the Robertson Key area and right behind me is M Social. Okay, it's designed by the French designer Philippe Stark. So now we are right here outside at the uh, walkway and you can see beside me is actually M Social, a boutique hotel. And here this is a very popular uh, eatery or even a chill out place, Bees and Butterfly. On, the, on my other side is actually Rivergate. So this place is also popular among expats. I mean like everyone want to have a piece of this because they are living at very close to this Robertson Key area with all the eateries and amenities. So now as we are walking along this uh, riverbank of Singapore River, this path will actually take us to uh, Robertson Key, Clark Key, Boat Key, and from Boat Key, it actually leads to Fullerton, uh, Fullerton Hotel. So Fullerton Hotel, there's an underpass where we can use to cross over to uh, Fullerton Bay Hotel, and that's where we get to see the Malayan. That is a good spot for watching the sunrise, and with a very beautiful backdrop, the Marina Bay Sands. So by the early 1930s, I mean like this area, like the Havelock, uh, the Robertson Key area is all developed into gold downs, also known as warehouse. So that's the reason also you see the warehouse hotel. It used to be a warehouse and now it is named the warehouse hotel. So you can see this underpass, you can see all this. In fact, that is an image of like uh, Sir Stamford Raffles and William Farquhar. And this is the history of Singapore. And here we have the Malayan and of course the Marina Bay Sands. So this direction will take you to the Marina Bay Sands. So now we are having our lunch at this super loco, which is located in uh, Robertson Key. So basically this place serves authentic Mexican food. Um, personally, I'm a fan of Mexican food and in, the, they have, in their menu, there's a lot of vegetarian uh, choices. So this is one place that you can check it out. 
For the start, uh, I think we ordered some chips uh, with salsa and guacamole. Later, we will be served with uh, chicken burritos, a clean bowl, and a classic bowl. Okay, chicken burrito served with sweet potato fries. This is a classic bowl with full beef and Mexican rice. And this is a clean bowl. Uh, this is chicken, roast chicken with uh, sweet corn and guacamole. So, ready to dig in? These days, the main area of Holland Village in Singapore is synonymous with wine bars, trendy restaurants and creative cafes, popular with the expat crowd. While the area has always catered towards expat families, more recently, it has become popular with young Singaporean locals as well. Holland Village, conveniently located in the centre of the city, was first established as a Dutch community, originally found in the early 1900s. This neighbourhood in the Bukit Timah region of Singapore was used for plantation estates. The neighbourhood was named after Hugh Holland, an architect and amateur actor who lived in the area. To this day, signs of European influence can be seen in Holland Village. So basically, this is part of Holland Village. This is actually uh, Lorong Mambong. So this stretch of road, you have a lot of wine and dine and cafe places. So during the evening, this place will be very busy. And there's also an ongoing construction uh, in this vicinity. Basically, there will be more retail and more residential units available. So by the time it's complete, this place will be even busier, more vibrant. Down here is Chibi Gardens. So it's on the other side of Holland Village. And you can see we have one whole stretch of cafes. We are here at Dempsey Hill and this place used to be an army barrack back in the British colonial times. So you can see right behind me, all these barracks have turned into like cafes, restaurants and uh, eateries. And on the other side, there's a furniture mall and over there, there's an art gallery. For info, a lot of expats and uh, locals love to patronise this place. One of the main reasons is because of the huge varieties of cuisine that is available here, ranging from Indian cuisine to Chinese food and there's many, many more. So basically, if you are here in the evening to chill out with your friends or even in the afternoon when you are thirsty, you want to quench your thirst with a glass of beer, this is the place to come. They serve dim sum at Chap Sui Cafe and other choices of food will be like Epicurean food, European cuisine, you will still find it here. And even for the kids, if you think you want to get a place for them to sit down and excite them, yeah, they have desserts and ice creams available here. Alright everyone, we have come to the end of our episode on Expect Guides with James. So for today's episode, we have touched on the Expect community. We have visited the Botanic Garden, the Robertson Quay, Holland Village and here, the Dempsey Hill. So if you like our content and you find it useful, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more future updates. So thank you for watching our video and we see you in the next one.